This is a video for uh, rotational motion using what I call the rotational fab five. Uh, you can pause the video and copy these equations into your lab notebook. But if we do just a, a quick look at this, you know, omega again is our angular velocity. Alpha is angular acceleration, and, and theta is angle. Now this equation is like v2 equals v1 plus a t. This one's like v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2 a d. This one's like d equals v t. So you kind of see the analogy. Uh, these equations down here are just convert angular okay, to linear quantities and back and forth. So I want you to pause video and copy those into your formula bank. And we'll just use them at one example in a little bit. Okay, assuming that you've copied those down, uh, we are ready to use these. So we have a rotating disk, and for some reason a lizard is on there at 1.7 meters from its center. We have a beginning angular velocity of 3.1 radians per second squared. So that's our beginning omega. And a lot of times in class we say that that's a W, but it is an omega. And we want to figure out when uh, we want to figure out uh, some things about it. You know, it could be, you know, uh, some final angular velocity, some theta that it's gone through in a certain amount of time, you know, things like that. It's, you know, not too big of a deal. So let's go ahead. Let's say we have omega 1 equals 3.1 rads per second. Okay, omega 2. Uh, let's just say we don't know what that is, and, and that's something we're not going to need. Let's say our angular acceleration in this example is 2.9 radians per second squared. Okay, and that time that that happens for is 4.0 seconds. Now let's say we want to find our angle theta. So very similar to chapter 2, you know, in this case we're going to use the equation theta is equal to omega 1t plus one-half alpha t squared. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So theta is equal to omega 1, which is 3.1, multiply that by 4.0, plus uh, one-half uh, alpha is 2.9, and then t is 4, and we'll square that. So we find out that theta Okay, is then equal to 35.6. And of course, we're in radians, because that's how we wish to uh, make our measurements. So you see how the rotational fab phi work on these rotating uh, objects. Uh, let's answer a couple more questions based on this. Well, how many revolutions has the lizard gone through? Well, if I want revolutions, I'm just going to take my amount of radians, 35.6, and I'll divide that by 2 pi. And when you do that in your calculator, make sure you do parentheses that 2 pi, so it divides by both. And that turns out to be 5.7 revolutions. I'll abbreviate that as a rev. So that's uh, easy to do. What if I want to know the total linear distance that the lizard you know, went through? Well, I can go d equals r theta. So my distance there is going to equal the radius. Well, the Lizard is 1.7 meters from the center. And the theta that I went through was 35.6 radians. So I can just multiply that two out there. And that turns out to be 60.5 meters. Okay. And one last thing. What if I want to know the linear acceleration of the lizard? Well, A is equal to R alpha. Okay alpha being the 2.9, and again the radius is 1.7, so acceleration is 1.7, and we'll multiply that by 2.9. Okay, and uh, that equals 4.93, and uh, that's going to be meters per second squared. So I just want to show you a variety of things that you can do with the Fab Five and converting back and forth with linear. So now maybe you can try the homework from the chapter 7 and uh, have a little bit more success with it.